Today I'll be reviewing an old game from my childhood, Dark Colony and the Expansion Console Wars. The game was released in 1997, the same year as the critically acclaimed Age of Empires and some months before Starcraft, but you never heard of Dark Colony before, and that's for the best really. This is but one from the many games from my childhood that still haunts me to this very day, the most notable one being Get Medieval. I am the bigger and the stronger of all the girly men. <laughs> Have you ever wanted to see a small alien crawl out of a breeding pot asshole? The game original soundtrack loop itself over 30 times in the match as there are only 4 tracks in it, getting stuck in the match because the AI army is blocking itself from moving? Regardless of what you answered, I will still continue. There are two opposing factions, humans and Tar. The humans are an all-round faction, they have good infantry units but their air units are a bit lacking since their only offensive airship is better used as a scout, but they make up for this with good land combat. Just look at this chicken walker, it's so powerful and cheap that you can win most of the missions just by spamming it. Now look at this absolute unit, these are genetically engineered cyborg humans, he doesn't even need a briefing apparatus like the other small puny humans have it, the mad lad even puffs a cigar in the middle of the Martian desert. The tar on the other hand are identical. Yes, both factions are mirrored, with small differences like the alien heavy infantry being melee while the human being almost melee, the tar can see better at night and the humans during the day, while humans have the exploiter to get resources, the aliens have the browser, while the humans have the sarge to put their enemies on fire, the aliens have this. You start the map with one exploiter, your commander and one soldier that will tragically die trying to find the enemy base. Remember to increase the speed of the game to 200% or else it will be too slow. And from now onwards you have to keep a constant flux of Petra 7 to keep up with the ever demanding cost of war. This is the only resource in the game but it's not infinite, so you have to explore the map and find more sources and protect them or else you're doomed before the fight even starts. After finding your enemy your only objective becomes destroying his Petra 7 income or just burst farther away into his base. Just be careful, because brute forcing can become an eternal loop of destroying his base and seeing a small ship coming back to build it again. Rinse and repeat. Yes, you can't even build a second base in the dead area of your enemy, but that's not a problem since there is no cooldown for units to be built, so only one base is all you need. The AI sucks and you can easily play one versus all the slots available and still win. Finally, the commander has a special ability. The human commander can summon more troops while the alien will abduct enemies from the fight. I didn't know this before, but when I was a kid, I thought that having a balanced team was the best strategy to win. Now with age and the wisdom I got throughout the years, I know that spamming garbage is actually the optimal strategy. I don't even see the fights anymore, I just keep producing more reapers and sending them to the enemy base. The original game has only 4 tracks in it, but one of them is actually ambience. The other 3 are great, the expansion adds 4 more tracks that are quite unique. Odd choice of music, but I have seen weirder, like Kanye West's performance in Yoshi Story for Nintendo 64. Yoshi. This game is old and you can tell because there are no females randomly inserted anywhere, no monkey brain bait in this game, no mom yelling girl or fame boy anime character, just plain hideous genetically modified Xenos. Look at this, this is the base unit from the alien army, and he looks like he's about to tell me how I can get all the proteins I need only from vegetables. The side demon is close to what a second grade kid sees when being mauled by a pit bull called Precious, while Atrus looks like an average Ukrainian, and the Gorim looks like me at 3am playing another machine translated RPG maker game, and you would think that in a game with aliens like this, the humans would be the heroic and honorable faction, right? Wrong, they rival the aliens in cruelty, and even enjoy making them suffer. In fact, they hate them so much, they even call them by racist nicknames, such as little buggers. Lastly, the game did not run well enough, it kept crashing, freezing, and I couldn't alt tap, so everything I did was run the game on this, monkey around the settings and use compatibility mode. Now, the game started to look good, except for the cutscene, which was a 320 by 180 AVI. That's why all the cutscenes I will play will be from another channel that uses an AI to upscale into a more presentable cutscene. Now, let's get to the interesting part, the story. First a warning, if you do not enjoy low quality pixelated images of dead humans and aliens or dark humor, then you shouldn't play this game, because there is a lot of it coming.
We really were edge kids back then. In fact, when I played this game, it was also almost the same time I got introduced to Mortal Kombat 2 and later 3. Seeing how easy it was to be decapitated in those games made me feel uneasy to leave my neck unprotected. At any moment anyone could come and slap my head off. And that's why I have a crippling turtleneck and scarf addiction. But I digress. It's the year of 2100 and the nations of Earth finally decided the two corporations to take control of the colonization of Mars, Pangluma, Aerogen and Stratus. Their objective is simple, turn Mars into a habitable planet. But this is only their surface level. Actually they are there for the Petra 7, a new energy source like no other. Meanwhile some aliens are searching for a new place to live because a plague destroyed their previous home. They found two great planets for it. Earth and Mars. The first day delayed their invasion since there are too many humans living on it and their latest scout went missing somewhere in the New Mexico desert. But Mars is a different story. Humans are still adapting to it and the terraformation isn't complete. Yet finding a new home for their species isn't their only goal. The Tyre are searching for Portalis, a portal that will be able to gather all their scattered brothers fleets into one place. From this point on you can play as the human or the Tyre campaign, lead them to victory and find some weird artifacts that hint the existence of a third even older alien species. That part of the story was never explained since the developer was bought and the game was forgotten. First, the human campaign. We will follow the commander of Panluma in his quest to save Mars from the alien invasion. The first and second missions are impossible to lose. The third mission you meet Aerogen, a very incompetent company that makes you wonder if they really prepared themselves for colonizing Mars or just did it on a whim because we are doing it first. Help them, kill the aliens and get a cutscene. You can lose this one. The defeat cutscene is great. Now you receive a distress call from Stratus. Apparently their base was attacked by the aliens and their commander needs help. You find him completely escaped from the recent battle and right next to him you find a body that strangely looks like the commander you should save. When you look back to the guy standing there he gives you this look. When I ask him if he's human he answers like this. And, and I was human. I am human, still. Uh not seeing that he is indeed a human and obviously not an alien in disguise, you save him and destroy the enemy base. Not long after that, you receive a message from Stratus telling you that they discovered the alien hive main base and you should destroy it so you can end the war. But shockingly, this was a lie from the Stratus commander and they jump on air base to kill you instead. After slaughtering everyone, you discover an ancient alien temple. You and your entire battalion got captured and are being tortured. You find an exit before the side demon gets you and you even save some of your men. During your escape, you find some weird artifacts called Solaris and Chaos. Mission 7. Retribution. You have to protect the Aerogen base. Right when you start the mission, they are attacked. So, forget about them and rush to the enemy base in the north. Trust me, Aerogen, leaving you to die is the optimal way for your survival. After killing them and claiming their Petra 7 sources, you immediately use the newly discovered artifacts to cripple the enemy economy. You see, the Solaris can be acquired by the exploiter by just leaving him above the small symbol. And one Solaris is all you need. Send them to the second enemy base and tell them. You should kill your now. These small devices explode with the energy of 2 to the power of 17 joules and absolutely incinerate everything under it. This is the first mission you can actually lose, so I recommend you rush to the enemy base to the west and immediately use the meat grinder to mount the last base to the north. His economy will be in shambles after that. So you just now and win the game. Now it's time to repay what Stratus did to you. Their main HQ is located near some alien breeding pots and you're going to kill them both. Just spend chicken legs and secure every Petra 7 along the way. The aliens will just watch Stratus base get destroyed and you can wipe them later. You finally have the Sarge now. They are absolutely slaughtering machines. You can attack both ground and air units and can even steal half of the Petra 7 income from your enemy. Just rush the enemy base to the south. You have uncovered a new artifact and it's time to use it. Maktor. Maktor attracts all enemies from on a small radius of a few hundred kilometers and kill everyone that reaches its center. Use it a lot because this mission is the hardest of the campaign. You have to kill the council members that are attempting to reach the tire stronghold to call for reinforcements. Unless you rush the enemy base to the west, it's game over. Now we have discovered the alien secret. They have an underground base and are charging a weird device as a desperate attempt to win the war. You have to stop them. I don't know how hard this mission is, because you can literally do this. It's the last mission, you're up against 3 alien bases this time. This would be a challenge, if not for a new artifact, Esgar. This weird looking drone can kill absolutely anything that enters its range. You just slap some aircrafts with it and destroy anything in your path. I really like this mission because no one stands a chance and winning is fun. Congratulations commander, you have made Mars safe for all humans. Unfortunately Esgar is actually Portalis and you end up charging it to send a signal to the unknown horrors living in Earth's deep sea that the tire have been breeding. 
Now for the aliens, you are ready for the colonization, but first you have to get rid of the human tribes living in Mars, and right from the get go, you'll even notice that the alien campaign is a lot harder than the human. Your Petra 7 sources will deplete faster, the enemy will have more troops, more sentries, and even more income. Not only that, you have to obey the council, and the devs make sure to make you hate them. I guess councils are just universally hated. The fourth mission makes you defy all odds to save the alien hive and destroy the Stratus base. Not only that, but you also have to opt the commander tick. Let me just fill you into something. The side demon is the equivalent of chicken legs here, but the first is melee, and the detection in the game sucks. If the creature is not immediately in range when you pass through, even though you have vision, it will not attack. This means that they both can see each other. The reaper will start firing, and you have to finish the wall command, stop, notice where the enemy is, and then go attack. Oh, better than that, since you are melee, you have less area to attack, because some of your side demons won't be able to reach. You are destined to lose before the fight starts. Great, you depleted all resources and finally won. You just have to... How is that my fucking fault? What could I have done? I did the impossible, and my reward was being thrown by myself at Area 51 with no help whatsoever to abduct Commander Tick. Fuck the console. The alien campaign is terrible. Here, the game is controlled by a TXT file. You have the damage, armor, movement, just change the numbers and your cheapest units will all become the strongest. And I'm happy I did that, because after that, you use the brainwashed Commander Tick to give you the Luna Attack, an artifact that makes the enemy attack themselves. Except, they will attack you if you're in range, and this thing can also hit their own unit. I feel like the devs of this game are trying to make a point here of how much they hate aliens. I mean, I'm xenophobic too, but this is maybe a little too much. After that, you fight Aerogen and Pan Luma together with Stratus, and later even kill Stratus, but Tick escapes so you follow him like a Japanese lunatic stalker through the countless waves of Aerogen soldiers until you finally kill him and get his head as a prize. Tick also ends up leading you to the underground temple where you find another artifact. Not happy with showing how much they hate the aliens, you start the next mission by losing. Pan Luma just destroy my base and I have to rebuild from nothing somewhere else. But the worst part is that the artifact you recovered, the Tektara, has the amazing power of controlling insects. I went from this now to this. The mission after that is just a standard mission like the human campaign. Now you go underground to recapture Portalis that is being held by Pangluma. Again, you can just skip the entire mission by going this way. Now you have Portalis to slaughter your enemies like in the human campaign. But actually no, because the council will keep that away from you. Now you are by yourself against three human bases that are fully developed and will spam sarge until you are dead. If you survive the never ending onslaught, the council will finally give you the artifact. After that, the mission goes from impossible to just extremely hard. If you win, you can open a portal between your ships and Earth. The end. Except they managed to make an expansion. I wish I could say anything good about it, but this expansion brings nothing new to the game. It's just more campaign missions and they happen while Pan Luma is fighting the Tar in the main story. So it's kinda not canon, more like a filler chapter. I'll start with the alien campaign. These missions are more of the same, but worse. You control the Tar in an attempt to protect the High Council from the humans and the former elite guard that got brainwashed by Aerogen. Every mission is a harder version of the base game. Even the bullshit Area 51 mission is even harder here. This mission is so terrible that they even make the controlling insect artifact look useful. Not only that, but in the final mission I can only see the sadistic grin of the developer thinking about the frustration of the players. You have only two in-game days to win the map, or else your base will be swarmed by this very balanced artifact that instantly kills everyone on sight. Panluma, if had this out this time, might didn't use before. Exactly like previous missions, you have to cheese your enemy to win. Rush down, get yourself the overpowered artifact, kill their main center because this will freeze their income and only after you cripple the economy of the 5 other bases, you come in for the kill. But don't leave your base unprotected, because they will drop some units there sometimes. The worst part is that if you win, it doesn't even end the war. You just become part of the council and that's it. The human campaign will take control of Aerogen and find out why they are so incompetent. Turns out while Panluma is fighting the tire, Aerogen is fighting the High Council Elite Guard. The first few missions are about destroying the enemy base, and you have to cheese, hack, cheat, rush, use everything at your disposal because these maps are not easy anymore. Then you finally capture one member of the High Council and brainwash him to lead to their palace. This is the last mission, and you even manage to capture an artifact before the final fight, the Palace of the High Council, which is composed of huge throbbing cocks erupting from the ground. I'm done.